The Constitution mandates 35 words that reads, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. It's 606 this morning. Now to our vaccine coverage. Tennessee vaccination rates increased by about 12% last week, but still, this is the number of people getting their first shot, which is down 63% from April. Well, experts say it takes two weeks after your final dose for you to be considered fully vaccinated. Using your tablet, a computer, or even your smartphone, the program connects vets to medical care providers instantly. Many of you have reached out with concerns about receiving the second dose of that coronavirus vaccine in a timely manner. Protesters gathered here at Alonzo Weaver Park demanding change. They're concerned about their water quality, but more importantly, their community. Every state has now expanded vaccine eligibility to all people 16 and older, and doctors hope to extend this option to younger people sometime soon. Now this plan, it comes directly from the White House. And also breaking into our newsroom, the U.S. Bureau of Prisons has confirmed that a federal inmate has escaped from the Millington campus after work. I hit the road and pulled up to the lab. The online instructions told me to sit in my car and wait for a text that my clinician was ready. And breaking news out of Baltimore this morning, Baltimore Congressman Elijah Cummings has died at the age of 68. In just a few hours, when Kamala Harris becomes vice president, she will be the first woman to hold this office. Now, this next question is pretty important. So can we use the app, let alone phones, inside the polling places today. That's the percentage of tests coming back positive. You can see it drawn out on your screen here. And if you're looking for an SO in the age of COVID-19, it hasn't been easy. And for a lot of us, we've relied heavily on online dating in 2021. Good morning, I'm John Paul. And I'm Kelsey Karen. This is a Good Day Memphis update. I'm sorry, what was that you in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to keep it together. I was like, what was that? <laughs> Is that a child cry? <laughs> I'm not here in my room. <laughs> what was that? Was that your cat? Yeah. Oh, my. Happy Halloween to you. Our music continues at 7 o'clock. She has a whole bunch of candy here and nothing in here that's fruity or chewy. Where the Starburst and Skittles? <laughs> All right, now at six is a Juneteenth celebration all over the Mid-South. We're live in downtown Memphis with a look at some of the festivities. Also for you this evening, a child sex abuse scandal within the Germantown Fire Department, a firefighter behind bars tonight after investigators found images of children engaging in sex acts on his computer. 19, we're talking to experts about the risks. And out of a crime alert, a Germantown firefighter behind bars charged with sexual exploitation of a minor. This after investigators found images of sex abuse in his email. Jason Law Edgar used his email account to share those child sex images. Here's his picture on the screen. Now, it all happened according to this affidavit. Investigators uncovered eight files containing images of young girls engaged in sex acts. Edgar is charged with sexual exploitation of a minor. He is suspended from the fire department without pay. And to see the full statement from the Germantown Fire Department, all you have to do is find the story at localmemphis.com. And a man accused of raping and kidnapping a federal employee is behind bars tonight. Police say Antonio Taylor raped and kidnapped the woman Thursday night in the 3800 block of South Advantage Drive. While on Friday, Taylor was arrested in the same area and faces a list of charges, including rape, kidnapping and assault. Well, the Yalabusha County Sheriff's Department and other Mississippi agencies are investigating the death of a former state representative. Ashley Henley was found on Patricia Drive in the Water Valley Boat Landing community. Henley is also sister-in-law of Christina, Christina Michelle Jones, who was discovered dead inside a burn trailer at the same location last year. The assistant DA says Henley was outside the burn trailer cutting grass when she was murdered. Henley served in the House District 40, which includes DeSoto County. Meanwhile, Congressman Steve Cohen speaking up after a Missouri man admitted he sent the representative death threats. Cohen says threatening speech is never warranted regardless of one's political views. I'm pleased this type of conduct is being taken seriously by the Department of Justice. Kenneth Huber pleaded guilty to two counts of threatening to assault a U.S. official. He also threatened a U.S. representative, Emmanuel Cleaver, following the January 6th insurrection. All right, well, after last year's summer of shutdowns, people are ready to get out and make up for all of that lost time, and that includes trips to the theme park. And then their risk of getting infected is much higher.
Break for students and the Green Dot School District is using that extra time to vaccinate students and their families. Yesterday, Green Dot offered more than 400 doses of the Pfizer vaccine to anyone who wanted one. 100 people had already signed up. To add your name to the list, all you have to do is call 901-881-5948. Well, Americans reached a major vaccination milestone today. 300 million doses administered in the first 150 days of the Biden administration. 65% getting at least one dose, but the nation unlikely to reach the president's goal of 70% vaccinated by July 4th. Christine Sloan with the story. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And today, celebrations all throughout the Bluff City for Juneteenth. Here's some history. June 19th, which was recently signed into law as a federal holiday, commemorates the day black slaves learned of their freedom in a post-Civil War America. Local 24 News reporter Brittany Clemens joins us live at Fourth Bluff Park to show us how a new festival is adding meaning to Juneteenth. Hey, Brittany. For now, live in downtown Memphis, I'm Brittany Clemens, Local 24 News. All kinds of things going on downtown today as I drove by. Well, Lemoyne Owen they also held a day-long observance of Juneteenth. The main event was a bikeathon to raise scholarship funding to benefit deserving students. The ride up to 25 miles also included celebrity riders who will compete in the Lemoyne Owen Mile, which circles the campus. Now, some of those celebrity riders include Shelby County Mayor Lee Harris and former Memphis Mayor Dr. Willie Harrington. Well, others told us why today is just so important. Well, following that bike ride was a reenactment of the historic 1865 ride into Galveston, Texas, to deliver the good news of freedom. Other activities included a health fair, cultural marketplace, and voter registration. Well, the Slave Haven Underground Railroad Museum celebrated Juneteenth by teaching the historical importance of music and of freedom. And what you just heard is an example of talking drums, a way that enslaved Africans would communicate with one another without getting caught. Well, the Bluff City is working on a brand new tradition, and year one has been a hit coming up. We're, talk we're taking a walk around inaugural hot air balloon jamboree sponsored by Local 24. The first meteorologist, Trevor Burchett, with a different type of hot air to tell us about. Yeah, we felt it today, man. Woo! Yeah, Kelsey, hot and humid on this Saturday. Temperatures right now still in the mid to upper 80s. All right, this weekend, dozens of hot air balloons took flight for the first Bluff City Balloon Jamboree. The event includes 25 beautiful balloons over at Collierville, and you can go and see them fill the air. The inaugural event goes to support local education efforts. We're excited to be here. It's going to be great for the community, great for Collierville Education Foundation, uh, great for the special, you know, special kids that will be here today. Uh, it's great for not just Collierville, it's great for the whole Memphis area. And today's event, the Jamboree Grand Finale. More than 20 balloons took off all at once. It was really cool. And as we mentioned, Local 24 was a proud sponsor of the Bluff City Balloon Jamboree. We even had our own balloon. Take a look at that. Hey, coming up in the world, Local 24. Jenny Nesbitt and Kim Morris gave us these photos of the Local 24 banner flying high over Collierville as our balloon ascended into the sky. We love the patriotic colors there, so we appreciate you guys for sharing this photo with us. All right, still to come, Local 24 is chasing down answers for frustrated people who are waiting for their packages. What's going on here? I'm waiting for mine. We're making the calls to USPS to try and find you answers. It's coming up next. All right, we're getting you answers tonight for a viewer, the father of a Navy sailor who asked for our help with major delays in getting packages to his son who's serving the U.S. Two pieces of priority mail sent weeks ago haven't even reached their destination. So. We went straight to USPS on why are things taking so long? Here's reporter Brad Broders with a story you'll only see on Local 24. Reporting in Bartlett, Brad Broders, Local 24 News. That's when those temperatures go back up with a chance of showers by Friday and Saturday. All right, that is all the time we have tonight here at 6. Join us again for Local 24 News at 10. I'm Kelsey Cairns. It was a carjacking that went bad. Here at Gibson's Donuts, an iconic Memphis breakfast spot, employees walked into their shifts Monday morning to find shattered glass and bullet holes as they walked into work. Don DeWeese, owner of the famous donut shop, says a white pickup truck was parked outside the store Monday morning, and it was approached by three people, one of them carrying a gun. They attempted to carjack the victim at gunpoint, to which the victim refused and ran away. It was then that someone fired shots into the store. Well, now DeWeese says violence is something his business 
business is used to. Back in December, a robbery happened here. He says his employees are pretty shaken up, but it wasn't enough to deter the regulars from grabbing a bite. Because we're open 24 hours a day. We have to be here cooking the donuts all night long. So if we close from 10 to 6, people are going to come up here and be mad as heck at us because we won't let them in that door. Open at all hours of the day, Dewey says incidents like this won't shut down operations anytime soon. Instead of closing at night, he's taking action to prevent more violence at his shop. We're adding eight new cameras on the property. We're adding more light out into the parking lot. He tells Local 24, while unfortunate, things like this can happen in any city. He's just thankful that none of his workers were hurt. What we learned from this is, if somebody comes to me, I'm going to give them my keys. Reporting from East Memphis, I'm Kelsey Cairns for Local 24 News. All right, well, back in March, I actually got really sick. I came down with flu-like symptoms, exhaustion, nausea, fever. And even though I'd gotten my flu shot, I wondered, did I really have COVID-19? In March, the doctor diagnosed me with a presumptive flu case and prescribed me medication, even though the influenza infection lab results were inconclusive. I was out of work for a whole week. Fast forward to today. As research developed and information changed, I was positive I had COVID-19 months ago. Positive before any cases were reported in our area. I decided to get an antibody test with hope that A, I could possibly find out what was truly wrong with me back in March, and B, have the ability to help others currently fighting COVID-19. And it was easy. I was able to schedule a test online through a local lab. After work, I hit the road and pulled up to the lab. The online instructions told me to sit in my car and wait for a text that my clinician was ready. Once it was that time, I went in and took a seat. My nurse set me up. To test for the COVID antibodies. Took a small beaker sized blood sample and that was it. It took a total of five minutes. I waited less than a day for the results to find out that my test was negative. The news, it was a little disappointing considering both my questions were left unanswered. The only thing I do know is that I don't have the antibodies, according to this test, meaning I cannot donate specific COVID-19 antibody plasma. To be clear, a negative COVID-19 antibody test is not a COVID-19 infection test. I may currently have COVID-19, just be asymptomatic. Now, I also may have had the virus, just don't have traces of the antibodies in my blood. And lastly, I may just need to take another COVID-19 antibody test. Protesters gathered here at Alonzo Weaver Park demanding change. They're concerned about their water quality, but more importantly, their communities as the Bahalia Pipeline Project gains momentum. Here in Memphis, somebody is trying to rob us and we're not going to have it. Among the dozens of activists, civil rights leader Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II making an appearance. He amped up the crowd to fight what he and other activists call environmental racism. Crude oil is known to contain cancer-causing hazardous chemicals. One pound of crude oil can contaminate 25 million gallons of groundwater. The pipeline connects the Valero Memphis refinery to the Capline pipeline. Its route cuts through some of Memphis's most underserved areas in parts of northern Mississippi. The concern is its construction will taint soil and water supply, posing a public health threat. This community is too historic and comes through too much sacrifice to be robbed in the 21st century. The future of the pipeline in Memphis is in city council's hands. It votes on Ordinance 5782 on Tuesday, and the nation is watching. Ahead of the vote, Tennessee Congressman Steve Cohen, alongside close to 30 other congressmen and women, wrote a letter to President Biden asking his administration to reconsider the project. And a few weeks before this, three environmental advocacy groups sued the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for issuing a construction permit. This pipeline project is a reckless racist ripoff. Also back in March, former Vice President Al Gore traveled out to the Bluff City expressing his concern. While multiple groups and organizations want to stop the pipeline, groups supporting say it's necessary to improve the Mid-South's economy. Energy citizens with the American Petroleum Institute say Ordinance 5782 will prevent Southwest Tennessee from getting the reliable energy and numerous other benefits from construction of a federally and state-approved pipeline. 
On its website, the pipeline promises it may provide 500 jobs, over $40 million in local revenue, as well as grants to communities along its route. Kelsey Cairns, Local 24 News. An icy early morning in downtown Memphis. For anyone braving the conditions, bundling up was a must. I wanted to capture the beauty of Mother Nature myself. I broke out the winter boots to document the icy world out my window. I went up to the rooftop to get a bird's eye view of it all. This entryway was glazed with fresh sheets of ice. The early morning skyline, a picturesque wintry scene. Ice crystals created an illusion of stained glass windows. While the storm was strong and fast moving early Thursday morning, it left behind a dazzling display of art. Tree branches turned to diamonds while icicles gathered on railings and surfaces. The faint wintry breeze just before sunrise was the soundtrack to this frigid Thursday morning. In the summertime, this pergola is where my neighbors and I watched the sunset over the Mississippi. While my hands were almost frozen grabbing these images, it was so worth it. Everyone can agree, while Mother Nature made for messy roadway conditions, history was made in Memphis this February day. Kelsey Cairns, Local 24 News.